Welcome to the Skillings Mining Review podcast. Today, we're diving deep into the nuts and bolts of our modern tech supply chain, cobalt, gallium, and those elusive rare earth elements. Yeah, mm mm-hmm. So, let's get real. Cobalt and rare earths aren't just minerals. They're the lifeblood of our tech devices. What's the big picture on that again? Right, well, basically, China controls nearly 70% of rare earth mining, and they're even more dominant when it comes to the big picture yep. globally. Meanwhile, about 70% of cobalt still hails from the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's like um, this critical resource pyramid is totally imbalanced. Exactly, and that imbalance raises questions. Why has the West been so slow to react? Canada and Australia are starting to ramp up their own mining efforts, but progress is painfully slow. Right, and you know, it's like, it's like trying to run a high-speed race with a bike while others are driving sports cars. The guys in the West face environmental hurdles, regulatory red tape, and local community challenges that make any mine operational take um, 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm, true. And then comes the whole friend-shoring idea. Is sourcing from political allies really the game changer here? It's a tempting idea. Friendshoring could theoretically blunt our dependence on geopolitical adversaries. But here's the catch. It's not just about extracting the minerals. You also need to refine, process, and then ultimately manufacture the tech. It's a whole supply yeah, chain exactly. challenge. I get it, but don't you think there's a risk in overly relying on friendshoring? I mean, it assumes that all allies can deliver on time, right? Absolutely, and that's where I um, have a slight critique. You can't ignore the fact that while French whoring might mitigate some risks, it doesn't address the core issue, the West's strategic disadvantage if Beijing decides to weaponize these resources. Mm -hmm. Very critical point. And that's the ugly truth here. If China were to leverage these minerals as political ammunition, the impact on Western tech and energy security could be immense. Exactly, and that's why experts suggest a two-pronged approach. Ramp up incentives, build national stockpiles, and maybe even deregulate some processes to speed things up. Right, indeed. All of this underscores that critical mineral security isn't just about the environment or economics. It's now a matter of national security. Spot on. Without those metals, the West's ability to innovate and compete in technology could seriously take a hit. It's a wake-up call to treat this like a wartime economy. Absolutely. Powerful discussion today. Stay sharp and keep following these crucial developments. Thanks for joining us on Skilling's Mining Review. Until next time, stay ahead of the curve.